I'm taking a moment today to try and explain the evolution of this masonry system. These are the first kind of generation of triangular masonry blocks that I produced. They are mass produced on a concrete block machine. These were made on a Columbia three at a time. And you can see kind of maybe at the slight taper or the draft to the shape. Um, and these will assemble into a sphere or any part of a sphere, such as a dome. Uh, there are two types of blocks. This one produces a hexagon and this produces a pentagon. So you can get kind of a soccer ball geometry. Um, they butt up like that. Maybe you can see kind of the curvature of the building just taking place there. The problem with these is that they don't interconnect and uh, they rely strictly on, on mortar and gravity. And they, they can be dry stacked, but um, if they slide out of position, it can cause problems. So I looked at creating an interlock, and initially I have a mechanism where you can just drill a hole directly through these abutting faces and put a dowel pin in. But that's very tedious and time consuming. So I went to this other system. That's what these are here with an independent diamond shaped key, which goes into a recess in the block, and then these just slide together with no undercut. It works just like that, and they slide together and they're locked in place. The problem with this shape is that in terms of popping out of a mold, this creates an undercut, so it can't release from a mold. You have to have sliding cams to release these three half diamond shapes. So I thought about how to create an interlock without an undercut, and that's kind of a contradiction. So that led to this design here. This is a single inverse mirror plane, or a simp. And on the abutting face here, exactly halfway through, there's an imaginary plane which is an inverse mirror plane, so that what sticks out on this side is a recess on this side. And that allows the blocks to, again, slide in without any undercut, and they lock together. Um, and that works pretty well. But I thought, how can I get a better interlock so it can't slide this way at all? And that resulted in what I call the dual inverse mirror plane, which we have right here. And we've got the same original inverse mirror plane this way, and there's another one running this way, so that this sticks into here, this goes into there. Each one is the opposite draft, and it can be produced on a two-piece mold without any undercut. Um, and then when you put these together, they completely lock, lock in place. And also, halfway through the block face, where this second inverse mirror plane is, this creates a line of sight, looking straight down the block edge. You can kind of see right here. So what that means, you can weave in uh, a tensile element, like a rope or a cable, like a steel cable, can weave these blocks together as it's assembled. So that's some of the evolution of the idea, and it continues.